Despite this earth-shifting success, Newton's drive and ambition towards eco-friendly solutions remains untamed, as he has ventured to explore other possibilities to be made from sustainable biomaterials. Currently, Alisam has successfully ventured into sericulture or silk farming, which is the cultivation of silkworms to produce silk and banana fiber weaving. Sericulture is basically rearing of a silkworm uh, with an aim of producing a, a yarn and fabrics and then finally the materials. Well, our sericulture program started uh, way back now, it is seven years old. And uh, we came about this, especially when we came to Kisumu and especially Kajulu here. And we realized that we could get some uh, species of uh, an insect that produces cocoon. Well, this we realize is a local uh, silk worm. And it was called Muga. Well, what we decided to do is actually to, do, to, to, uh, to upgrade it, is to do what is called hybriding so that we could get a uh, silk that is uh, very strong and uh, strongness of silk, we call it tensile strength. Well, we did the uh, crossbreeding and we produced a silk that is now meeting, that is now uh, very comfortable with the environment around here. Well, when I started, I could uh, produce just a handful, like a kilo or two. But with time, we are now shipping close to 200 kilograms, 600 kilograms maximum that we've gone. I've been working a lot with insects. Uh, and that's why I even landed uh, to work for a number of insects, entomological institutions like uh, the International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology. I also worked for uh, Center for Agriculture and Science International, which are all uh, working with insects. So I've loved insects, especially commercial insects, from my childhood. So even though my studies divert a little bit, but I've never left uh, the insects aside. Unfortunately, most of the silk products are also going for export. But currently, we are trying to make some clothes that we sell locally, but from silk. The international market is so big. Yes, and uh, in most cases, uh, the dollar is always very beautiful than the Kenya shillings. And given its strength, it enables, uh, it can enable uh, one to at least expand very fast as compared to Kenya shillings. Apart from uh, silk, we have also uh, banana fibers that we decorticate and process into, we, we spin it into thread and also blend our silk materials with it. That is number one. Number two, we also have the sheep wool that we also get, though this one we don't get it locally, we get it from Limuru. Because down here we don't, do not have a Merile ship that produces enough wood. We also spin it and uh, make uh, materials out of it. We also uh, culture algae. There is a strain of algae here that is called chlorophyta. And uh, we culture it locally. It produces very good fibers that we also spin into thread. Besides that, we also uh, process the fish fibers. After turning the fish skin, we produce, we do what is called buffing, and buffing produces a lot of fish fibers that we also spin and we make uh, cloth out of it. So those are uh, what we call non-cotton fibers that we do. Newton agrees that his innovative solutions are creating a buzz as his company's valuation has considerably grown, 
owing to the positive trend that more and more consumers, companies, and industry players are now working towards 100% eco-friendly materials. Uh, from banana fibers, we produce uh, uh, grain storage uh, bags, and from silk. Besides uh, grain storage bags, we also do the doughnuts. But we also blend banana uh, fibers with silk to produce the materials for, for clothes. Yeah. Number two, uh, the silk materials you know, comes in different forms. We do the shirts, we do the trousers, we do all sorts of attire that you can mention. Yeah, uh, the design, number one, the design is uh, based on uh, our designer but the, the, the colors we obtain them from uh, the natural dyes that we extract ourselves uh, we felt like uh, most foreign markets do not like synthetic dyes because of their toxicity they contain a number of toxic materials including sulfur uh, mercury and others well, now we, did, we felt like we have enough natural dyes. We have enough natural sources of dyes. Uh, for example, here we extract dyes from uh, onions, uh, the so-called alam sepa. We extract dyes from uh, indigofera plants. We extract dyes from uh, what we call apenes. We extract dyes from eucalyptus, we extract dyes from hibiscus. So all this, we use these dyes to dye our, our clothes. The only unique, part, unique thing about our dyes is that we use a natural mordant to fix the dyes. They last longer and they look so beautiful and they are non-harmful to both the environment and human beings. Well, when it comes to the cost, the cost, I look at the cost on a different uh, perspective. We have the environmental cost. These synthetic dyes are non-biodegradable, which means uh, the damage they are going to cause in the environment is so huge that you cannot compare with the, with the cost of buying a natural dye even though the actual cost of natural dye is a bit high. But if you look at the long-term part of uh, synthetic dyes, the natural dyes are far much cheaper. Extraction of natural dyes depends from one plant to the other. Like for example, the dyes from onion will only last for 24 hours and you have it. Yes, um, we have uh, dyes like from eucalyptus. Eucalyptus will take 36 days and you have all your dyes ready. Yeah, so it varies from one plant to the other. In today's globally interconnected world, it remains prudent for each and every person to expose sustainability. What is for certain is that with such programs as premiered by Newton, the environment improves one initiative at a time, craving the path for a better, and more mindful future. Well, one of the waste, most of the waste that I target are this waste that interferes a lot with the environment, and especially with the lake, Lake Victoria. In Kisumu, uh, women use a lot of synthetic uh, hairpiece, and these hairpiece are disposed of after every four days of plating. Now this hairpiece, well, some of them are from a human corpse. And they are human corpse that are uh, from outside the country. That is number one. Number two, we have some synthetic uh, hairpiece that will never decompose. And in the process, they contain what we call the uh, uh, polyphilic, po polyphilic materials which are highly toxic, the PVCs. This runs down to the lake and causes a lot of uh, toxicity and thereby kills 
both flora and fauna in the lake. Now, in my own, at my own level, I felt like I need to tap these things from the source. We last with uh, a number of salonists so that they do the collection of these things, uh, of this waste for us. They don't need to dump them carelessly as they used to do. So once they are brought to our site, we sterilize them, we sort them out, and we weave them into very beautiful doormats and even uh, uh, floor carpets. So this is another way of, uh, of extending the lifespan or rather the, the end of life for this waste. Uh, tell us, you know, they, they use different materials. Uh, they use uh, materials like uh, polyethylene, polyesters from polyethylene. And you know, these offcuts often gets back again into the lake because when it rains, they are swept. Or alternatively, they normally burn them. And when they burn them, remember the, those toxins still remains, especially in polyesters. So it's still swept uh, down to the lake. So we normally convince them that they also collect these offcuts for us. And uh, we also bring them here. After that, I have a team of women here that we train on how to do the domats again from the same same waste from, uh, from uh, the tailors and uh, dressmakers. Just like leather tanning, sericulture has its fair share of challenges, from stigmatization to missing target and negative attitude towards its practice. One of the challenges is uh, more of uh, cultural. Most people believe that uh, uh, if you are rearing insects, then you are either a witchcraft or you are uh, doing, uh, how do you call them? Majini things. And therefore, this has been a stumbling block in the growth of sericulture. Yeah. The other thing is that, you know, uh, most people do not like uh, crawling insects. You feel like, you know, uh, your blood is, is not uh, moving the right direction. Therefore, touching these insects has been a big problem to some people. And this also hinders the growth of this sector. Number three, we have some uh, tribes in Kenya that believe touching such kind of insects is a taboo. And therefore, all these are stumbling blocks in the development of sericulture in Kenya. Well, uh, stigmatization is there because uh, most people feel like uh, you are not uh, an ordinary person, you are not a normal person, especially when you are touching insects. But, uh, we overcome this by actually uh, by actually making sure that we sensitize them on, on the economic benefits of this. You subject the whole discussion to cost and benefit analysis. You tell someone that, you know, uh, when I rear the insects, I generate my money within 30 days. As opposed to growing maize, that will take you like four or five months. And you are not so sure. Well, sericulture is something that you control. You, can, you are sure of what you are going to harvest after 26 to 30 days. Now, these, all these factors, when you put together, they are convincing enough that one stops looking down upon you. And now there is a change of mind. People look at it as, as an economic activity rather than just a social enterprise. I wanted at least to have uh, close to 500 farmers. But currently I'm at 161 after seven years. Well, uh, partly I know that you know, I'm doing it alone as an individual. But if at all the government departments, uh, some donors can also come in, then this thing will grow very fast. Yeah, therefore I've not achieved uh, a number of targets, target issues that I was actually uh, planned to achieve. Number one, I planned to, uh, to, to create a pool of farmers. I planned to train 500 farmers to join the sericulture successfully. That is number one. 
within a span of three years, but this has never happened. Number two, I planned to establish uh, a processing plant. Of course, that one is now on course. Processing plant, this would also open market for the silicone farmers. Yeah, but that one is already of course or on course. I'd planned to create at least 100 jobs within three years of the inception of the pro project. Uh, I've not achieved that. I'm only at 13 new jobs that I've created from the sericulture. Yeah, so that is, uh, those are the things that I, I planned to achieve. On the other hand, the journey hasn't been a lone one. In his work, the government has also played a major role. This is a position affirmed by Reverend Fanuel Mango, former Enterprise Development Officer, Kisumu County. The government plays a big role in sericulture, and that is why, under the Ministry of Agriculture, we have a whole department called the National Sericulture of Kenya. And that department is basically focusing on uh, silk, nothing else. So that tells you how serious the government is with this kind of program. At every Kalro station, especially Kalro Kibos, we have a department of uh, sericulture uh, with, the, with, with the main headquarters, of course, at Pika. Therefore, the, national, the, the sericulture is a government program. Yes. Only that uh, uh, the uptake is a bit low. There is uh, very low sensitization about the benefits of uh, sericulture. Yeah, the government is focusing, the, the department, uh, the, the CALRO and uh, other government agencies are focusing more on other crops yeah, at the expense of sericulture. I am Reverend Fanuel Mango former Enterprise Development Officer for Kisumu County. I was with the Kisumu County up to 2022 20, June. Then I came out. At the moment, I'm uh, at least a freelance support to the MSC sector development programs. Yeah, so even up to now, even though uh, I came out of the government system, yeah. but we are doing a lot to support them and to also encourage the sector growth so that our entrepreneurs, our entrepreneurs can create wealth for themselves, for our people, for our county, and also create employment for the for the youth because if you look at this region much of the activities are msmes activities but that is not an issue because all industries all factories start small and then if nurtured well they grow to become large scale industries and they create wealth for the nation and also employment for the citizens of the nation. Newton's efforts haven't been futile. In the more than seven year journey, he has received recognition continentally and internationally. Uh, I've achieved uh, a number of awards. The first one was uh, 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 the best innovator in Kenya the best scientific innovator in Kenya, that was in 2015, the trophy that you see here. Uh, no one has ever snatched it away from me. Number two, um, the award winner of uh, the best uh, Nile uh, Innovation Award. That is another one. Uh, I also have also won an African Best Innovation Award in, 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 in sericulture. Yes, those are the few four awards that I've achieved so far. And do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to this YouTube channel to get more of our videos.